I'm Chris Spiegel and today I want to talk about keyboard shortcuts on your Mac. I started to work with computers really early and I also found out that keyboard shortcuts are really helpful in making your work with your computer faster and not having to switch to the mouse all the time. That's why I wanted to share those with you because I see a lot of people not knowing the shortcuts for certain things that they do every day and over and over again and having the shortcuts is really something that can help you immensely in not having to search for certain buttons or functionality or having to go into some sub menu to create for example a folder in finder or something like that if you're using a windows machine many of those shortcuts work there as well but with different keystrokes so please feel free to google those for you because i am using a mac and i will share my mac shortcuts and the ones i use the most so the first thing we will do, we will switch to the computer and then I will show you the shortcuts and directly show you how they work in action. The first shortcut I wanna share with you is command and spacebar. Command and spacebar brings up front the spotlight search and you can also access the spotlight search with this little um, loop icon on the top right of the menu bar. And what you can do with spotlight search is a topic for another video. You can basically search contacts, you can search the internet, you can search applications, files and everything. The one thing we are going to use it for right now is starting applications and there is something that you can do with a finder of course you can go into the applications folder and then select the application double click and whatever but here you can basically just type command space and then the name of the application or even just the start of the name of the application for example for text edit i just write text and then i can hit enter and then i have text edit open right there so now what I want to do is I want to open a new document in text edit and there we already have the second shortcut which is command and the letter N which basically means new document. So if I press command and N here it immediately opens a new document for me and I can start typing away. Once we have a new document open, there are a couple shortcuts that I want to demonstrate you which are basically window management shortcuts. One shortcut is, for example, Command and W. Command W basically closes a window. For example, in this case, if I have two windows of this open, I just pressed Command N again for creating a second document. I have now two windows open, but I want to close this second one, but I do not want to close this first one. There, I can press Command and W, which closes a window. If I have both of these windows open and I want to close all of them and effectively uh, closing the whole application, I can do Command and Q, which will close the whole application. And in my case, it will also bring up the save this document window because I started typing something there and it will suggest to store this into my, in this case, desktop. But I don't want to save it. I want to just close the program. So I say don't save. And now this program is closed. It's closed, so I don't have it in the dock anymore. And if I want to run it again, I can just do command and spacebar, and then I can start it again. And then I already have this open screen. And if I want to do a new document, as already mentioned, command and N opens a new document. Most of these shortcuts actually work in most applications. Sometimes the command N doesn't work Sometimes the command W behaves a little differently than what I described here. But overall, command Q, command W, command N, those shortcuts and many more I'm going to share with you right in this video, they actually work the same in all the different programs you can use on your computer. And the same thing applies to the following shortcut, which is hiding an application and minimizing an application. So if I do command and H, uh, for hide, I will hide this application, which makes the wind uh, the dock icon actually a little gray in the dock, and it does mean that the window is hidden. And this actually applies to multiple windows. So if I have, for example, three windows open of this application, and I do Command and H, all of them are gone, and they are in this dock icon here. And if I come back to them, all of them are here again. The same thing in a way works with command and M for minimize. I can hit command M and it will minimize one window and another window. And basically those windows get stored in the dock down here and then I can open them again and then will they will come back. 
Then there's another hiding shortcut which does not hide the windows or the application you're currently using, but rather the opposite, it hides all of the applications besides the one you're actively using. So for example, if I am in Chrome here and I make Command, Alt and H, it basically closes or not, it doesn't close, it hides all the applications besides this one. And then there's another shortcut I wanted to share, which is Command and Tab. And command tab basically brings open this quick switch between applications. And you can then, for example, bring back hidden applications like text edit, and you have all the windows again. And then you can also switch to Chrome and it jumps to Chrome. So it's command tab for going through these applications and command shift tab for going the reverse order of those applications and jumping between those. Now, if you have, for example, text edit with three documents open and you want to switch between those, you can, of course, do this with your mouse, which I'm doing here right now. But there is a shortcut actually for that. And it is command and the tilde sign on the American keyboard uh, right uh, below the escape sign on the German keyboard. It's a little tougher to find, almost impossible for me. So with the American keyboard, very easy to do. You can just hit command and the tilde sign and then you switch between those windows of this particular application. And that way you can, for example, start typing here and then, uh, oh, and then just switch and go type something here. The next very useful shortcut I wanted to share with you is to go into the preferences. Now, of course, the preferences of every Mac application are stored in the name of the application in the menu bar and then you go to preferences and then you hit that and then you open up this little window in this case here and in other applications of course the applications uh, the preferences actually look different but if you want to have that in a quicker way and in a more concise way and it's almost in every application you can just hit command and comma and you instantly open up the uh, window for the preferences. And of course, sometimes the Mac does not what you expect it to do. And you want to, for example, close an application that does not react and you have this little spinning rainbow circle or something. On the Windows computer, we all know this thing with control, command and delete. Uh, on a Mac, there is a similar thing, alt, command and escape. And that brings into the front a force quit application. And if I, for example, want to force quit text edit, I can just click force quit. And then it does quit it completely without asking anything. And we can also, for example, if you have problems with the finder, you can relaunch the finder. It does not quit the finder. It relaunches it because obviously you don't want to just quit it because it is at the basis of your operating system. But I wanted to get back into the text edit and I just relaunched it. And the interesting part there is, as you see, the documents are still there and the windows are still open. And that is because beneath the operating system actually stores intermediate data and it does not just forget everything if you quit an application it actually holds all the data for you and it saves versions and a kind of a backup so the next shortcut i wanted to share is command z and command y which both of those are actually very, very useful and almost work in every application. And those two shortcuts are actually just for undoing and redoing what you already did. So for example, if I type this and then make a couple new lines and then I type something else and I mistyped something, I have, for example, who is here and I wanted to write who is there, I can now hit, hit command C and it just removes everything I have written there. This is a not so good example in a text editor because in a text editor, normally you want to just remove the word you have just written. But in a program like Photoshop, for example, it actually reverses the step you just did. So it goes back one step and you can do the same thing with command Y. And sometimes in some applications, it's actually command shift and Z. So it's redo something and command Z is undo command shift and Z is command shift and Z is redoing it. This actually works better for stuff like, for example, bolding. So I want to have this bold and then I start typing again. And then I do command Z, I undo the writing and command Z and it is undoing the bolding there. Now we have written such a nice text and for example, we want to print it now. So the easiest way to do that is just to hit command P. Of course, you can also go to file and print 
but actually I find it much, much more useful and much, much faster to just do command and P. Of course, we don't store our files on paper and have to print them if we want to store them. So we want to store them on the computer, but we have to save them, right? The easiest way to do that are two shortcuts. There is command shift and S and there is command and S. If you have just created a new document like I have here, command S and command shift S actually perform the same task. But if you have a, a document that you changed, command shift and S is bringing up a, document, a new document and storing it in a different file name and command S just resaves re the same file to the same directory where you already saved the original. So if I press command S, it brings up the save this document somewhere and I want to save it to the desktop, for example, just hit enter or uh, put the uh, click the OK. So I have now this document here and then I can still type in this document and I hit command S again and it just saves the same file again. It does not create a new one. It just saves the same thing again. Now, if I do command shift and S, it actually copies this document and then I have a new document which is not stored. So if I do now command and S, it asks me again where I want to store this document. This behaves a little differently in some applications because sometimes it doesn't really work like this with a copy thing, but rather just opens a where do you want to store this version of this file. Now this concludes the looking into what you can do with files creating and resaving them and doing stuff like that and organizing your windows a little easier. Of course, I have in the other video already shown you with better snap some ways to snap your windows to the sides, bottom and stuff like that. Those are custom shortcuts. They do not come with the system. So you have to actually have a tool installed and I have made a video about that before. Next, I would like to share some shortcuts with you which are particularly useful in Finder. Uh, one thing we do in Finder all the time is renaming files, for example. And of course, you can do that with your mouse. You can do right click on the thing and then say rename and it will show you this in blue and then you can just tape your new file name and hit enter. But actually, if you want to do that multiple times, it is much, much more useful and much, much faster if you do it with your shortcuts and keyboard only. So you can just do enter and there you can instantly start typing the new name, no right click necessary. So just click enter and you can type a new name and then you are good to go and just hit enter again and it saves this. Now, if you want to, for example, create a new folder, we can actually do this with your uh, shortcuts as well. Again, with a mouse, you can do right click new folder. But if you are on the keyboard already and you want to use that, you can do command shift and N and it will instantly create a new folder and you can name it however you want. And then one of the most useful things that Apple introduced a couple of years ago is actually the preview with spacebar. So if you are hovering a file and it is blue like this, you can just hit the spacebar and in almost all of the cases, this works perfectly to show you a preview of the file you are currently viewing. So if you are viewing a text document, you will see the text. If you are, um, if you have selected a file like a picture, it will show you the picture. If you have a PDF, it will instantly show you the PDF. And if you have music, it will instantly play the song and you can preview what is in that file before opening it. Now, what if you want to open a file you have selected in Finder? Obviously, you can double click it and this might be the most useful version but if you just want to have the keyboard again shortcuts and stuff you can just do command and arrow down and it will instantly open this file for you. You can actually do the same thing with command and O and it will do the same thing so command and arrow down is the same as command O. And last but not least in finder we have command and delete so command and delete just deletes the file and moves it into the trash. The last couple of shortcuts I wanted to talk about are text editing shortcuts. These are more interesting if you type a lot of emails, for example, but they are really useful all over the system because they work in all the text areas around the system. The first shortcut I wanted to tell you about is, of course, you can delete stuff with the delete key. Uh, but if you are, for example, inside a document and you want to remove characters, you can and do the removing in the other direction, you can actually do Fn and delete and it deletes to the right instead of the left. 
So you can do that and then you can of course delete to the left as well and that is really useful if you are inside of a sentence and you want to delete the word that is coming next instead of the one before. Then of course we can select the whole text document which is command and A. That basically selects the complete text document that is open right now. Then of course we can copy our text which is command and Z. So the Z as Chris and then we can input it with command V. Also we can do a cut and copy which basically removes the words from where you are currently have them selected. So if I do command X, it copies them, but also removes the words where they are written currently. And you can um, input those again, and you have those exact words that I just cut here. I already showed you the shortcut for command A, which basically selects the complete file. But if you want to select text, you can just hit the shift key and then the arrows. So you can do, for example, to the right, you can select single characters. And if you do the same thing to the left, it works as well. And then sometimes it works a little differently. If I do, for example, start with left and then go right, it reduces the selection. In some programs, it actually selects to the left if you type left. And if you then start selecting to the right, it starts selecting to the right from where you started. So this is one way. The next way is if you want to do the same thing with words, you can actually hit Alt and Shift together and then hit the right character for selecting words instead of characters. This is very useful because it is much faster to jump through words and select the whole word instantly instead of having to go through every single character. Now the same thing applies to doing it downwards. So if I go for example hit select and hit the down key it will instantly select the complete stuff that is basically from there to the end of the line and then to the same uh, the same place where I am currently in the upper line but in the downward line. This works great for selecting faster down and upwards. Then we can also do the same thing with Alt because if we have Alt and Shift we can jump a whole paragraph basically selecting the complete paragraph and then also we can select the second paragraph. So we can easily select paragraphs instead of just characters, instead of just words or lines. The next thing is complete lines. If I wanted to, for example, select this line, I can jump to the front of the line with command and the arrow to the left, and then I can select it by command and shift and then to the right. This basically selects the whole line instantly, or better said, it selects the line from where I am. So if I am inside this sentence, for example, and I do command shift and arrow to the right, it will instantly select all of the text to the right of the character. If I do the same thing with down and up, it will instantly select everything to the end of the document. So if I go command shift and down, it will select everything that comes after this character downwards. So if I do the same thing towards upwards, I can do command shift and up and it selects everything upwards from this character. So shift basically means you're always selecting something. So a combination of command shift and alt shift will always select certain characters, words, paragraphs or the whole document. But if you want to just jump through documents, you can also do that. For example, if you want to jump words, you can just hit alt and the arrow keys, for example, to the left and right, you will jump words to the up and down, you will jump paragraphs. If you do the same thing with command, you will jump left and right, you will jump to the start and end of the line. Left is the start of the line and right is the end of the line. And if you do the same thing with up and down arrow keys, you will jump to the top of the uh, document and to the end of the document with the down key. Now I know remembering all of these keyboard shortcuts is rather hard from the get-go and it takes time to learn them. But maybe you come back to this video once in a week or two and you remember a couple new ones or you re-remember the ones you already used. And you can also go into the description below. I have written all of the shortcuts I just talked about there and you can re-read them and maybe you have a little cheat sheet and learn them in the next couple of weeks. I find it really, really useful and I 
barely use my mouse anymore and it makes my life with my computer and my work with the computer so much faster. Now of course please like this video if it was helpful for you and leave a comment down below if you know any other shortcuts or if you have any other questions. Also connect with me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. I am at Spiegel.io everywhere and subscribe to this channel to have new videos like this in your subscription box every other day. See you in the next video and have a nice day.